Hi everyone, Nevada Nails person. So today I'm going to be sharing the products that I used in my makeup basket this past week. Today is Saturday, November 12th. Well, I say it every time, the time is just flying by. And um, I used some new products, thought I'd share those with you, my thoughts on those products, and um, some likes, not so much likes. So stay tuned and I will tell you about those products. But in the meantime, please be sure to go check out my Sephora haul and a special thank you because there is a special thank you. So highly encourage you to stop by that video. Um, and um, that special thank you will run through November 25th. So hint, hint. So stop by and check out that video. So let's see what's in my basket this week. So for my face, I've been sticking with these two. Basically, there are two new bottles. It's the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow. And this is the Hope Girl CC Cream, which is um, color control and correcting. So it comes out white from the um, bottle itself and then corrects to your shade. So I think that's kind of neat. So it gives you the benefits of um, a BB cream or a CC cream. But in this case, it has that layer of color control, which I think L'Oreal has a product like that as well. So this has some glow to it. This doesn't. So when I need that little extra glow, um, I'll share another product with you that I just started using this week. And then usually with a, a traditional foundation, I would use a primer. So I did use up um, That Girl from Benefit and it's a brightening face primer. So it's kind of like that Becca one where it's the illuminating um, primer. This one was a little bit thicker and I think just a tad pinker. But I really like this. Um, you don't hear about it too often. At least I don't hear about it too often. So I've been through this too, but it took me about like two weeks to get through. And of course I don't wear the foundation every day, but um, when I do, I'm using a more traditional primer. But when I'm using a, a CC cream or a BB cream, I default to my um, Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water, which of course I don't have on hand at the moment because I used it for something else. But this week I'm using the e.l.f. Primer Mist, which is a new product. and I, I It's a frosty bottle, you can't see through it, but it's already down to about here and I've only been using it about a week. There's only an ounce in here. So I know the um, primer mists are kind of controversial whether or not you need it or not. So I've been looking into um, the ingredients in this product and the ingredients in the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water and doing a comparison. So a little chemistry for a non-chemistry person to kind of figure out what's going on here and do I need the Smashbox one? Is this one a better product uh, price point wise? Is it the same product? Um, so look for an upcoming video. I'm going to compare these two when I finish my research. I've got my chemical research hat on right now. So using this and testing it to see how I feel about it right now. So far you really can't tell much of a difference, but I do think it does help with um, letting your BB cream or your CC cream sit on your face a little bit longer, if that makes sense. So I like it as a product. So on my face, what I've been using is um, for bronzer contour. I pulled out this little guy, and I do have it in the full size, but I just came across this mini, this is the um, the Sculptor from Tarte and I don't think it felt too much love on YouTube because a little bit on the oranger side so it's meant to be more of a sculpting like bronzing product and I like it, it is a cream product but it is definitely a little bit more on the orange side but it does come in shade 1, 2 and 3 and 
for my, I would say fair to light skin shade, I used three which is the deepest shade, and I think I get a better contour from that, but this is just in shade one for the sample size one. And I do like it, it blends in, it's a cream product. I used my Beauty blend Blender to um, blend it out in the normal spots, and of course, because it was a little too orange, I also used Becca's Low Light, which is a um, contour cream product, so I used a little bit of that to give me a little bit back of the uh, contours of my face after blurring them out with um, CC cream and powders and whatnot. So today I did use that um, Hope Girl CC cream and um, a powder, a pore controlling powder. But um, this week I also was using this Fiona Styles. This is the light medium sheer sculpting palette and this is what it looks like so it's I would say it's a very neutral type of contour um, it, it is sheer so I think you do get some almost patchiness with it and this is the second time I'm using it so I primarily use the, the two lighter shades so that's what they look like. So you can see it's much cooler than the Sculptor from Tarte. But there's just some, I don't know. Sometimes it just appears to be patchy on my skin. So I will use it up. It's a nice, convenient, small, compact for contouring. And it's not obnoxious contouring because I do use that cream contour as well. But you could see, I mean, I do have some discolorations and whatnot, but I think it's more prevalent in this close-up shot with this pri uh, tripod that I'm using. So you could see I have some discoloration, and it's not hidden because I'm using a CC cream. So, so then let's get to eyes. Something new from Elf. I don't think I released the haul yet, but this is the Elf, um, what is this called? It's just an eye, oh, I don't remember the name of this product. I threw out the packaging. But it's a, a doe foot and it's a eye, um, like an eyeshadow primer type product. So I have this on today, just as a little wash of color on my eyes with um, the Mike uh, Beauty Cosmetics, which is kind of like a dupe from for Mac Painterly. It's a light flesh toned um, primer that actually does conceal. So if you see this, you can see it does cover some imperfections on your eyes. So I laid this down as a base and then just used this um, e.l.f shadow product and you know I couldn't get the lightest one this one is in the shade um, soft beige I wanted linen but actually I kind of like this shade better I think because it just has that little wash of color and that's what I have on my eyes just these two products right now so I am liking both of these and definitely for a Saturday and I've been using this all week under my eyeshadow so I'm really liking this as an eyeshadow primer as well. But when you do use that Mica Beauty Primer, it is a sticky primer, so I have to set it down with my Wet n Wild Cream Brulee. And yeah, I'm really hitting up this product. You can see I'm really going through it. So perfect, it, it lays down that base, does a little covering, and this um, takes away the tackiness so I could lay on product. So I'm using my Smashbox Always Sharp Espresso Eyeliner primarily. Today I do have on black eyeliner from Wet n Wild. It's it's definitely wearing away. This is the um, uh, what is it called? I don't know. I don't remember what it's called, but it's the thicker marker for an eyeliner. So I'm using that and I have to enhance my eyeliner a little bit with some black eyeliner as well because I get a little bit of that patchiness. So 
that's primarily what is on my eyes. But for eyeshadow this week, I'm featuring a palette which I just loved. This is the Master Palette Palette by Mario, and of course it's Anastasia Beverly Hills. And it's a beautiful palette, beautiful warm shades. Um, my my experience with it is we have three mattes and the rest are shimmers. I dug into these mattes because I really did need some mattes because these are very pigmented and uh, very shimmery as well. So um, I primarily used these two and sometimes I was blend these two together because I would want a little warmth because this is a very cool blending shade yet this one was a little dark. So I wish there was a fourth matte shade that was kind of in between these two or in between these two. Just from my opinion, but um, but the shades are beautiful, um, highly pigmented. I mean, look at, I mean, let's, this is Isabel, okay? It's a beautiful shade, and that's a matte shade. Um, let's try, I know I wore that one a lot. I wore Marina a lot. So there's great shimmery shades in there. And all right, let's discuss this. There's a shade called Kim. Now, when I heard about Anastasia coming out with a palette, I saw the shades and right away said, okay, that's me, I'm getting it. I didn't realize that there was a connection. Um, oops, I just dropped the brush. Um, I didn't realize there was a connection to the, the K family, I'll say. Um, I normally don't, I would rather not support them, just for my own personal reasons, but um, I think Mario, even though he is their makeup artist, he did a great job with this, and it's an Anastasia, uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills product. So I don't want to be hypocritical, but I did like this palette, and it's not coming from that family. It's it's he's the makeup artist for. So if you weren't aware of that, now you know. But um, it's a great palette. I would still recommend it. I really enjoyed it, and I will be using it a lot in the future too. Really love this a lot. Okay, so let's talk about some other things that I didn't like. So much with light blush trio palette. And this was a holiday palette that came out, and it had one special shade, Songbird. Oh, this is going to be fun because it's um, so shiny. And then we also have Snapdragon, and so it's Wisteria. Whoops, I need, see, I need this little sheet. It's Wisteria, Songbird, and Snapdragon. And it's a highly pigmented palette. I, you just dip your brush in there, and you, it just stays on your, it just adheres to your face automatically, so you have to go really light-handed. Um, so as, I did try to go light-handed. I'm using Songbird today, this middle shade, but it is super, super pigmented. I mean, super pigmented. And it, Snapdragon, too, that's another one. It's super pigmented. So you have to be careful when you use this. So when you put it on your brush, as soon as it you, it hits your skin, it is it's going to town. So you have to be careful. I will say it does fade though. So I may appear to have a lot of blush on now, but I guarantee in about two hours it's going to calm down. So I guess I'm sort of on the fence with this palette. I do like Becca products. I've been a fan of Becca for a while, even through their little uh, controversial palettes with Jaclyn Hill. I still support it and like those palettes. This one I didn't love as much. And I have Snapdragon in the individual pan, but there seems to be a little bit of a difference. So I, I didn't look to see where this product was made, if it's made in China or if it's made in the U.S. But um, sadly, this wasn't a fade for me. Um, the shades are beautiful pretty standard shades, but 
it just didn't perform as well as I thought it would. Or maybe I'm just not feeling it this week. You know how sometimes that happens? So that's why I'll put a palette away and try it again in another six months. Because maybe by then I'll change my mind. But typically I like Becca products. This wasn't the best thing for me this week, though. Another product, which is kind of a fail for me, um, and I do think I might have received a defective one. This is the Tarte Eyelash Curler. And um, I do get this from Tarte every year. Or I try to anyway, if it's available. They they have their eyelash curler and they usually bling it up for the holidays, something special. And I thought this was so pretty with the pink and purple. So I said, oh, I need one anyway. So I did go ahead and get it this year. But there's just something off about this curler. It, it seems kind of flimsy. And even pressing down, it, it it's almost like it, it's not pushing up enough. I can't explain it, but it, you see, like it, there's just something off with it. So I just ordered another eyelash curler. I did ask for recommendations, but no one really helped me out with um, any good recommendations. So I, I purchased the Tweezerman. So I'll try that one. I was going to order the regular Tarte one, but I was kind of afraid to after this one because I'm just kind of nervous using this. If I'm using it on my eyes and something snaps, that that could be very dangerous. So, FYI, if something seems wonky with this right away and you just opened it, I would return it. So, just so you know. Oh, still using my 24-hour um, photo finish um, eye primer from Smashbox great stuff and almost gone. Uh, another product that I used this week, I purchased this set of Alginist um, Reveal Concentrated Luminizing Drops and this was a little set that I got from Sephora and it comes in the shades, there was two shades, so the two shades are rose and champagne and they are liquid drops so it's a different form of highlight to me so um I could take this or leave it it this is what it looks like I'm glad I purchased the smaller bottle so I'm just taking out one little drop of um, rosé so it looks pretty shiny and that you get a, a lot of illumination. Um, it would mix well with a foundation, but I think if you apply it like in your traditional highlighter areas like here and here and on your nose and uh, Cupid's bow and whatnot, it's a very um, subtle highlight if you could see on my cheeks. So I guess maybe I'm used to the, <laughs> the extra blinginess, but um, I'm glad I got the smaller, cheaper set. Um, not a format I like. I, I typically use a cream highlighter and then the powder highlighter on top of. So I just thought, I'll just try this. And I'm glad I tried it, but I don't think I would repurchase this. Um, not a fan of this format. If you want to add it as glow to a foundation, that would be great. But I, I was looking more for um, highlighter. Um, so I'll probably put these on the side and hopefully they won't dry out like my cover effects did, but um, I'll just add this to future foundations that do not do not provide that glowiness. So yes, yeah, still going through my It Cosmetics Illumination Foundation. I should have mentioned this earlier. This poor little wonky thing held together with tape. So I'm trying to get rid of some of that hard pan and getting there. So It Cosmetics, love this product in my purse at all times. Of course, you know, I have my ELF HD under eye setting powder and also setting my face with this uh, product from Holika Holika. It's a uh, pore cover powder and it's a nice little 
powder. It comes with a little puff, and now you're going to see it everywhere. So it's just a, a nice, translucent, very finely milled powder that I've been enjoying. Now, oh, and another thing, I should have, it was so tiny I missed it. This I got as a sample from Sephora in one of my holiday orders. And it was, it's the Naked Skin Color Correctors, and there were two. And this is in the shade Peach. And I did say in one of, I think in my monthly favorites that I did not like the Naked Skin Concealer. But this Naked Skin Color Corrector is awesome. So this is the corrector right here. And this is in, just in the shade Peach. And it really, I think, does help somewhat with my darkness under my eyes. So, um, it's been helping and I like it and the consistency does feel a little bit different on this one. I don't know if it's me, but liking it to the point where I'm probably going to purchase the full size. So, interesting. So let's talk mascaras. Um, for mascara, since I have so many deluxe mini size, I'm going through and trying. The beginning of the week I tried this. Jane Airedale, our Airedale. This is the um, longest lash, I think it's called. Yes, it's called longest lash. And um, I wasn't crazy for this formula. It's this giant brush. See when you pull it out, it doesn't. It, it almost takes up the whole container. But it's a much drier formula than I tend to like. So, oh, I used it a few days. It wasn't a fave. So, tried it out. Okay, so I know now. Now, this one, I'm just going to say I hate it because I love it. Because I don't want to love it, but I, <laughs> I do like it. This is Marc Jacobs 3D Blacker Omega Lash Volumizing Mascara. I, I didn't think I would like this. There's nothing particularly different about it. It just has a regular size wand. That may have something to do with it. But I do, do feel it's voluminizing. A little funky smell. It's very chemically. But it, I feel like it does something for my little eyelashes. And um, it does have a little flakiness, I noticed, um, in the last day or two. But I do like it, though. But I'm not going to spend money on this. So I can I can only imagine how much this costs. I'm um, I'm a drugstore mascara girl at heart. So um, give me a CoverGirl or a Maybelline. <laughs> uh, my high end is the Tarte Lights Camera Flashes or Lashes, and um, this is definitely out of my realm. But it is what it is. So I know I like something now. Hmm. Will I buy the full size? I don't know. I'd have to get a super duper deal. I'd have to see how much it is. I take it back. I mean, if it's twenty or twenty three dollars, that's how much the Tarte mascara is about, I think. So maybe they'll have a deal. Who knows? So that's it for mascara. For lip products, um, I watch Tara Babies, and you sh if you don't, you should watch her. She's excellent. She has every type of high-end makeup that you just can't help but envy the, the, the makeup she has. And she's a fan of Dior. And I had heard about these um, lipsticks. Um, this is the uh, Rouge Dior lipsticks. And then I did happen to see Jeffree Star did a review of these lipsticks. And I saw this shade in Delicate, and I said, oh, that's really nice. I really like that a lot. So I did pick up the shade um, Delicate from Dior. So a fancy lipstick, but I got it during the VIB sale. So it's a nice, warm, peachy, more peachier than nude, I would say, but along the nude line. So I've been wearing that and loving it. Um, 
The only thing is it does, I don't know why they put these funky scents in, <laughs> these high-end lipsticks, because my YSL has this crazy smell too, but it's like a, a, a fruity, floral, sweet smell. Um, not the, not to the point I wouldn't use it, but I notice it each time I put it on. Let's put it that way, but it's such a pretty shade. And another thing I pulled out that I believe is a sample size or a deluxe size, um, this is from Nude Sticks. And typically when you get something from Nude Sticks, it comes in a metal container, and I think they're a little bit bigger, so I think this is the deluxe size. This is the Gel Color Lip Cheek Balm. So, um, and it's in the shade Pulse, and it's what I have on right now. Now, you can see from my lips, it is glossier. So, I wouldn't use a glossy balm on my cheeks. You know what I mean? So, to me, it's a lip product. So, it is a pretty lip product. There's a swatch, and you can see it's glossy. So, I've been wearing that. I would say the beginning of the week and then um, this guy came in and I wore this towards the mid to end of the week. So like these two products a lot. Um, very different. One more moisturizing than the other. This one's more of a gloss. This one's a, more of a traditional lipstick. So liking that and rounding up with hopefully the end of maybe another week of my Ulta makeup setting spray. Not my favorite but I'm using it up. So that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Please be sure to check out my video of um, my Sephora VIB haul and a special thank you. I highly recommend for you to drop by. And I'll also have the bubble here of um, here or no, I'll have the bubble here and the video here of um, to subscribe to my channel so I highly appreciate that so any questions let me know and I will talk to you soon bye